Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today, once again, we're going into a web application security project series about OWAP's top 10 web vulnerabilities. And of course, today we'll be discussing about injection. And it is also in some way overlapping with broken authentication as well as broken access control, because the whole idea is how can we gain access to a website in which we have no access into, which we have no account into. And at the same time, are we also able to log into other users' account by changing and manipulating the kind of input that we're pushing into the web server? So again, here we have the OWAP's top 10 web application security risks. And of course, you can look over here and we're going into number one injection. And we are going through a lot of all these different risks that are actually potential onto any web application service that you run. And one of the key things that you should really do as part of learning, as part of growing your cybersecurity skill sets is to run a couple of servers on the internet and see how hackers are actually really doing it. How are they trying to inject payloads into your site? How are they trying to gain unauthorized accesses? Are they doing any kind of SQL injection and so on? So that will be one of the great ways because my own website gets more than 25,000 unauthorized accesses in a month. So again, all these are great ways for us to learn about cybersecurity, especially in terms of web application security. Okay, so moving forward. So going back to this diagram, which I think is really important, is about the flow of the web server, right? In the left side, you can see the browsers, and the browsers are sending data into the web server. And your web server can be running in different kind of platforms, like your Apache, your Glassfish, IIS server, and on the right side, you have your database systems. And of course, you could be using any kind of database system, like your Microsoft SQL, PostgreSQL, SQL, or even some of the newer databases type, like your MongoDB and so on. So the whole idea is understanding all of the different stack of technology because there are vulnerabilities, there are positions in which we can try to break into either on a web browser, on the web application server end, or even on a database server end. So of course, as you understand, what we are trying to do is to understand a little more about how the authentication and the login forms are actually being built as part of the lecture as well as tutorial today. So the whole idea is how can we first log into a site without an account? So over here at the bottom, you can see select or from user. So again, this is the query that will be sent from the web application server to the database system. All right. And over here, what we are trying to input is one on the username and two on the password. So once the username and password has been sent from the web server into the database, there will be a cross checking inside the data that are residing inside the database system. So this cross check allow us to also think about what are the security mechanisms, the sanitization, their input in place inside the web application server and, and how are we able to actually bypass those commands and queries so that we can inject and log into the site without any account. All right. So, and the second thing that we want to look at is, of course, thinking about open source intelligence, because when you look back at one of the videos in which we were learning about Google searching, we were lo looking about open source intelligence. How can we find all the email addresses of a company? How can we find usernames of a company or a website? And we'll be also able to find those data. And once you can find those data, you'll be able to inject the username into the login page, allowing you to bypass the login of the password. So you do not even need to know the password in order to log in to the site. Okay, and the last point is also on the default administrative pages that are actually running inside your website. All right, so when you are doing a bug bounty, when you are doing a web application penetration testing, where are the administrative pages? Where are the login pages? So if you're on WordPress content management system, there will be wp-admin and so on and so forth. So different sites have different administrative pages and those are also places where you want to actually do a directory discovery or crawling into the site to discover where are all these different pages so that you can access into them and try to run different kind of commands. So without further ado, let us get started on today's tutorial. So over here, we have OWASP Juice Shop. So this is, again, mimicking a real-life e-commerce site building with some of the latest technology. So this is a wonderful way for you to actually deploy a web application server inside your internal network and try to run this kind of payloads and see whether you're able to bypass some of these different security mechanisms they're running to actually secure the site.
Okay, so again, another really good thing to learn about, especially in terms of web application penetration testing, is to build the entire website yourself. So you can build APIs, which are application programming interfaces. You can build the web server using different kind of technology like PHP, ASP, and so on. And also what are the queries that actually will work with the database systems. So build a couple of all these websites yourself. And I have I've won a couple of programming competition when it comes to building some of these sites. So having a deep understanding of this web technology can really help you in terms of how can you bypass the security mechanisms that are actually running and inherent in different kind of technology, web technology, they're running and powering up all these different websites, okay? So the first thing we can look at is, of course, on the top right side, we can see an account page. So when we click onto account, we can see that, of course, currently we're logging. So we can log out of the account. And once we log out, we go back to the account again, and we go and click onto the login page. So right at the login page, we can see that there is a requirement of email as well as password so these two are the key data that we can see immediately from here so what we can do is again think back about sql injection so if you go back to one of the lectures as well as tutorial about sql injection that we did for another website it's the same thing can apply here regardless of the different kind of sites so if you go into the email page and if you are because you already understand about how structured query language work and how all these databases are taking the command coming in from the different web application servers the first thing we can do is of course to test out whether different kind of commands or allow us access into the system so over here to zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see we can do a single code and from a single code we can enter or one equal one followed by a semicolon so or one equal one means that the full statement that will be injected into the site will actually end up as a boolean true okay so there are a lot of boolean operators that are running inside the database query and remember computers are logical so in this case once we have this statement over here that you can see and we can enter any password that you want any random password and once you have the details here what happens is that the first user who is actually residing in the database will be logged in for us. So over here, what we are doing is we are actually closing the structure and we're injecting our own command. So or one equal one means that the statement will forever be true. So likewise, you can put or zero equal zero or two equal two. And with a semicolon, that would end the rest of the structured query language. And we can go ahead and click on login. So once you click on that, this will immediately allow you access into the first user. So if you go back into the account tab, you can see that we are now running as admin at juice-sh.op. And immediately we have access to the first account. All right. So the other thing to notice is also in terms of where are the default administrator pages. So here, of course, if you can see on the URL link, we can see a slash search. So this brings us to the search page. And if we, for example, go into account and we go under the profile, we can see a slash profile. So now the whole idea for us is to find out where is the administrator page. So for example, if I enter administrator or administration and hit enter on that, that would immediately bring us to the administrator page. So likewise, you want to look up where are all the default pages for popular content management system, whether they're Joomla, WordPress, or the self-built systems. They would have admin, administration, and so on and so forth. So all these different places will allow us access into the site, and we can see the administrator content, what are the administrative privileges, and we can further our attack onto the site. So over here, what we can see is we can see different kind of users and the different kind of email addresses. So again, if you think about email addresses, we can also think about finding them from open source intelligence. So if you went to one of our earlier lectures on Google searching, advanced Google searching, so we were using different kind of operators. And again, those operators can be used in finding out all the different email addresses of a company, of an entity, of a domain. At the same time, you could also be using Meltago to help you actually find out all of the email addresses that are related to a particular entity. So again, all these are different ways for us to find out what are all the email addresses that will belong to a company, belong to an entity. So moving forward, because we already have the email addresses, we can log out of the account. And in this case, we can go back to the login page and we can actually paste the email address.
So now this goes back to the idea of learning on SQL injection. So what can we do now in order to log in as the user? So it could be any users, any email addresses that is already have a role inside the database system that is residing behind the web application server. So what we do here is again, we're putting a single code and this time around we put N one equal one followed by semicolon and we can enter any password because we have no idea what is the actual user password and by entering the following inside the email what we are doing is that we are confirming this particular email address that exists inside the database and one equal one so instead of using or which will log us in into the first account what we're trying to do is we're trying to log in to the specified email address that we have key in into the system Okay, and N1 equal 1 will help us validate that and allow us entry into the system as this particular email address. So go ahead and click login on that. And immediately, we manage to log in to Jim's user account. So once again, I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of the queries. Remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.